Good afternoon everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Maz and today I'm in Sirencester. And in today's video, I'll be talking about my one year ownership with this car, my 2019 Jaguar F-Type Checkered Flag Edition. For those who don't know, this is my Jaguar F-Type. I've owned this car since October of 2022, marking this my first full year with this car. And if I'm brutally honest, there's nothing much to report about it. Nothing major has gone wrong and I have no issues about it at all. So when I bought this car, this had about 19,000 miles and I've done roughly 10,000 miles ever since. I have been using this car every day. It is my daily. Further reasoning the fact that I bought this 300 model, if it were to be a 550 or even a 450, I would probably struggle to do that much miles. And from the outside, I haven't really changed much with the exterior of this car. Probably the only big difference would be the emblems. So it's a very small detail with a dramatic effect. I bought an all black front emblem, I swapped out the background to keep the original red and from the distance it does make a dramatic effect. Even from here I can see the lack of chrome on the front grille. And in terms of ownership and running costs they're not that overwhelming. Um, insurance is somewhat high but that's because everyone's insurance has gone high in the last year or so and unfortunately the f-type was no exception fuel costs they're probably the same as any other two liter petrol of course they're not as fuel efficient as the diesel equivalent but unfortunately jaguar ingenium diesels are one of the worst thanks to their timing chain guides probably the only pet peeve to this ownership experience would be that the diamond cut wheels are very very easy to curb rash and of course, due to the nature of these being diamond cut, they are harder to refurbish and you can only do them a certain amount of times before you have to paint them one color. The front ones have been refurbished before, but if I have to do them again, I'll probably just go for all black as I have seen many other F-types with gyrodyne wheels, as these wheels are known, in black. Now a very tiny detail, which I recommend all Jaguar Land Rover owners to go for are these sweeping indicators. They're only about £10 or £20 from AliExpress depending on the seller and the quality and they do dramatically transform these mirrors especially with a black mirror housing. And again this is something that I fitted to my old XF as well. And of course due to the nature of this car being red in this case, Caldera Red, it is a lot easier to keep clean. Now, in terms of running costs, I have purchased two new rear tyres. These are Michelin PS4s. Uh, they are pricey, but that's just the nature of these being massive. That's pretty much me pointing out the obvious. Again, I have mentioned that I blacked out the badges. These are factory black badges from Jaguar. This being a 2019 car, even the black packs came with chrome emblems. The black badges were only introduced a year later. Also, I've removed the Jaguar script because the J fell off. The reason I left some of the residue behind is because I plan on getting a new script, but unfortunately Jaguar don't sell them separately. A huge thank you to both Infinity Exhaust and Modstock for this modification these twin exit exhausts from Infinity and the back box and resonator mod from Modstock. Both of these modifications I strongly recommend to pretty much every P300 owner. That being said, V6 and V8 owners can still go to Modstock if they want a little bit more tune from their exhaust. One thing I advise everyone to look out for is these pins that hold the parcel shelf they're very well known to braking due to how flimsy they are. 
So that's one thing to look out for if you're thinking about getting an F-Type. But again, that's very, very minor. I've had the side windows tinted as well. Surprised that Jaguar don't provide them as standard. The Jaguar key fob, the original one that was provided to this car, was, was the older style one, which was known to peeling. And of course, I swapped it over to this newer style, which I got from AliExpress, and I just moved the board and the battery from one to the other, along with this Jaguar Heritage bottle opener key ring. There should be a link in the description down below for the key fob swap video. And one thing I'm glad this car does not have is keyless entry. It has keyless start, but in order to unlock the car, I have to do it through the key. And models that do have keyless entry will have a button here to pop the door handles. But if you do have an F-Type with keyless entry, I do recommend getting a Faraday pouch. This is strictly subjective, but I am thankful that my particular car has the sports design pack. It is standard on the checkered flag, but you can still get this as an option on the regular R-Dynamic, which includes this extended color-coded lower splitter, these extended side skirts, and the upgraded lower valance. Also, a huge recommendation, if you are buying an F-Type, make sure it has a reversing camera because a lot of them don't. And personally, I wish I had the fixed wing, but that's subjective. It's starting to rain now, so let's quickly step inside. Now the interior is where most of my tweaks have been done. Firstly, I've got this aftermarket diamond stitched floor mat, which covers the entirety of the footwell area. The original checkered flag mats, which I still have, were wearing very thin and they were very hard to keep clean. This material is waterproof and I can just clean this with a wipe and be done with it. I've also bought these alloy pedals used from eBay which again I strongly recommend. Very bizarre on Jaguar's behalf of not making them standard. They are standard on the R and the SVR but not on the 300 or the 380. Of course again another subjective thing this car has the upgraded fake suede headlining which I'm thankful for because I really like having a bit of fake suede to contrast with a leather interior, which again, being a checkered flag edition, has the extended leather. And in the case of the checkered flag edition, the stitching is red. And of course, one of the best additions to this car are these performance seats. If you are buying one new, I strongly recommend this upgrade. And it's got the Windsor leather as well. I have had other people sitting in this car and they were quick to point out that these seats were very, very comfortable. Despite being the performance ones with the shoulder supports. And of course, these aluminium red paddles. Link in the description below on how to fit them. They are available in silver if red is not to your liking or would clash with the interior. And in fact, silver is actually the cheaper option. This red color does have a premium over the metal silver. And of course, I chose red because it links in with the red detailing as well. So this checkered flag edition has this red 12 o'clock mark. And it even has red seat belts. Overall, I'm happy with this car. And I'm glad I've owned this car for a year now. In fact, there's only one thing I don't like about this particular car. There are no heated seats. So if I were to turn on the ignition... Yes, those are aftermarket footwell lights. And that was just the dash cam turning on. Any F-types with heated seats will have a seat emblem here. And then you just press down on them to turn into heated seat mode. But despite that, this car does have a heated front screen, dual zone climate control, and a heated wheel. So at this point, I would have thought heated seats would be a given. And yes, this car does have the basic 
seat controls. There's no memory or lumbar support, but I knew that this car wouldn't have it because I've seen that on the pictures. And to me, it's more of a minor pet peeve. Otherwise, you, the seats are fully electric. Now, despite being the P300, you still get an active exhaust. And even though I don't like the fact that this has the active wing, what I don't like is that if you get a fixed wing option, this would be just one big button for the auto stop start. And while we're here, let's press this button. I've even fitted a Union Jack underneath the active wing. So that's a very brief description of what this car was like after this one year ownership. Other than that, there was, no, there was nothing major to report. It's all going well. Any future plans? Hopefully I'll be able to keep this car for a few more years and enjoy it as it is. But other than that, um, the future of Jaguar looks very, very bleak. Jaguar want to go more upmarket, well over 100 grand, and compete with the likes of Bentley. Now, if that's the direction that Jaguar go, I may have to, well, take a stopgap from the brand. And maybe after this, I may consider a Maserati of some sort, or maybe a top-end AMG Mercedes, and maybe go the direction of what many other former F-Type owners have gone, possibly an Aston Martin of some sort. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me talk about my very surprisingly hassle-free one-year ownership of my Jaguar F-Type. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you are new, ring the bell to stay up to speed, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.